Welcome back to my kitchen where everything is scratch made and home preserved. I'm Jenny and welcome to Jarred Up July. This is a collab put on by Kettle Kitchen and Blue's Self Reliance. So thank you so much for inviting me. This collab is all about putting food in jars. This collab is also sponsored by For Jars Lids. So thank you so much For Jars for sponsoring the collab. Stay tuned to the end of the video so I can tell you about the giveaway. But first, we put food in jars. And instead of doing a canning recipe, as you guessed from the title of this, I'm going to be sharing some more of my dry mix recipes with you. So pull a chair up to my counter and let's get started. First thing I'm doing is getting started with some stuffing bread. So I am adding yeast to warm water. And I sprinkle a little sugar over the top of the yeast. And then I let that sit for about five minutes before adding the rest of the ingredients. Okay, so you can see the yeast is nice and bubbly and my messy counter on the other side there. Kids have sunscreen and leftover stuff from hanging out at the pool. But my yeast is now activated. It is an instant yeast, so you don't really need to do this. Old habits die hard for me. I always give it five minutes to start getting bubbly just so I can make sure it, it's active. And it, you know, I store these in my freezer and a lot of the yeast bags have been in there for about a year. Here I'm adding white cornmeal. When you're making stuffing bread, it needs heft. So I do use bread flour. I use cornmeal and wheat flour whole wheat flour <coughs> but I have an entire video on how to make this bread so I will link that in the description box below if you are interested and then I add in the bread flour or that's the whole wheat flour sorry I had to go to the other side of the counter to get it now the bread flour It's a process, but this is so worth it for stuffing mix. That's the first recipe we're making is homemade stuffing mix. And so handy to have on your shelf other than buying boxes of stovetop, which aren't that delicious. And now I add in whole milk powder. Next comes all the seasonings that make stuffing taste like stuffing. We put it right into the bread dough so that when we cube it up to make croutons and dry them out, they already have flavor, even though we add extra flavor also afterward.
Okay, I let my bread dough knead for seven minutes, put it in an oiled bowl, cover it, covered it with oil so that it won't dry out, and I put it in my oven with the light on to let it rise for two hours. Okay, hopefully you can see. For now, I'm gonna move on to mug cake mix. I like to keep this on hand because I'm not gonna make a whole cake. There's only two of us that live here and Robert doesn't always want cake. I love cake. He'd rather have cookies or things like that for a snack. So um, for dessert, we like to have a cookie or a little bit of cake or a brownie or something. But I don't want a huge batch of it because we don't need to eat them all day. So mug cakes are usually what I make for us when we're in the mood for dessert. And that's not every night, by the way, in case you're wondering. So what I'm going to do is put, build the mix in this bowl first. So I'm using two cups of all-purpose flour, two cups of granulated sugar. This is the formula I think works the absolute best for mug cake. I've tried many different versions and this one is by far by far my favorite. We need one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. We need a tiny bit of floof in our mug. I need a half a teaspoon of salt. I need one and three-fourths cups of cocoa powder. I buy everything in bulk, huge cases and we're only two people here but because I freeze a lot of stuff I make or I make mixes and um, you know we might be empty nesters but our kids still come home to eat in fact they're here every Sunday on family day to eat sometimes throughout the week too and I have grandchildren they like to come over and eat also so I hear a lot of people say they don't need these things because they're empty nesters, but you know, empty nesters still have family and still eat most of them, if you're like us. I can probably get about one more holiday out of the cocoa I have left in here. I don't have to get more. Okay, I'm just going to whisk this. You can also put milk powder in here so that all you have to add is water when you make this. Or if you already always have milk on hand, you can just add your milk, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it like this so, and just add milk when I make it. Milk and a fat. But you can totally put your milk powder in here and then just add water and butter or oil or whatever you want to use for your fat. I usually use coconut Sorry oil. Sorry about the canner noise. I've got my canner running in the background. You can also use butter powder in this so that butter powder and butter and milk so that you just add water to your mix. Okay, all that is whisked to together. Things need a storage jar, whatever you're going to store it in, and I am just going to fill up my jar. Oh, also you can add two cups of chocolate chips if you like. Um, I don't always want chocolate chips in my mug cake, so sometimes if I'm in the mood I'll add them. Otherwise, I like to leave it plain so I have the choice. Also in this mix, you can put buttermilk powder if you have shelf-stable buttermilk powder. Some buttermilk powder has to be kept in the refrigerator after opening, so make sure you do check that before you add buttermilk to this. You can also add any other flavors that you like. A, a good rounded tablespoon of cinnamon in this would be perfect. Two cups of whole milk powder, two cups of low-fat milk powder, or two cups of buttermilk powder in here. And then that will fill your jar up completely. Mine's not quite as full because I did not use the milk powder. But now I have choices. So when I make them, I can use a couple tablespoons of, or I'm sorry, a tablespoon of dry, or a tablespoon of buttermilk powder, or a tablespoon of just milk, not powder. Buttermilk or milk. A lot of times I use almond milk. You can use M&M's, you can use 
regular chocolate chips. You can use mini chocolate chips. Um, nuts, if you like, if you want to put nuts in yours, you can do that too. To make your mug cake, you're going to get yourself a mug. You're going to add three tablespoons of mix. And this will only fill your cup up about a quarter of the way with cake. So if you want a bigger cake, then you need to double this. So three scoops of your mix. Then you can add in two tablespoons of chocolate chips, M&Ms, nuts, candies, whatever you want to put in your mug cake. Okay, here I'm showing you I am adding coconut oil. So give yourself a couple tablespoons of coconut oil. I only put one this time and it wasn't enough. So put in two tablespoons of fat, whether you're using butter, oil, um, what, oil of your choice. You can use whatever you like to use. And then use the milk product of your choice. Here I'm using whole milk, but you're going to want two tablespoons of milk or water if you've already put the powdered milk in. And then, of course, you're going to want to stir this well. It'll be a thick batter. And then you're going to want to microwave that amount for about 30 to 45 seconds. If you double it, you're going to need one minute. Vanilla powder. You can make mixes with this. I'm going to put in one tablespoon into my mix. This stuff's very vanilla-y and is shelf-stable. I get this one from the Middle Eastern store. I know you can get it on Amazon. Very, very vanilla-y. I'm just going to mix that in. Okay. Okay, there's my mug cake. As you can see, my cup isn't filled. It's about a quarter of the way filled. Just enough. You can put ice cream on here. You can put frosting if you have it. Whipped cream, whatever you like. I like ice cream on mine. But this makes the perfect size dessert. Just a tiny bit. Okay, our bread has risen. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into a 350 degree oven. I'm gonna give that 25 minutes. I'm setting my timer, 25 minutes there, and the canner is almost done. I'm going to go ahead and get dinner going. Okay, so I have my cutting mat and my bread, and I've got my um, dehydrator out. We just want to cut these into cubes. We're going to make croutons out of them to put them onto the dehydrator. Now, I do this couple weeks before Thanksgiving every year. This is how I make my stuffing for Thanksgiving as well. So half of these croutons we're going to turn into an instant stuffing mix. The other half we're just going to leave as plain croutons. That way I have a choice. Look at the inside of the stuffing bread. It smells delicious, oh my gosh. You can also use this bread for turkey sandwiches. So if you wanted to make this and make the two loaves, use one loaf for this stuffing mix and the other loaf for turkey sandwiches. You can, you can totally do that. You just want to cut them into smaller cubes because we're using these for stuffing mix. A, want them to fit into jars. B, when you purchase them from the store, you don't get huge crouton size ones, not like salad crouton size. You don't want them like that. I have my uh, bread loaded into my dehydrator, and I'm going to go ahead and get this started and dehydrate my bread. My croutons, I'm going to go ahead and put this on 125, and I'm going to put it on 5 hours. 
it's really dry here, so it's not going to take me as long as it will if you live in a humid environment. Okay, after your breadcrumbs are, or your breadcrumbs, your bread cubes are completely dry, we're going to make our mix. Okay, I'm making enough to go in my half gallon jar. If you want to separate this into quarts so that you can do it per serving or per recipe that you make, that is quite fine too. But because I'm making it where we can do multiples, I'm going to do my um, flavoring separate. I am putting one cup of freeze dried onions. That was my half cup. You can use dehydrated onions or freeze dried. I'm using my Thrive freeze dried. If you're interested in Thrive, I have a, a link in the description box below for you. But I love the, using this to make mixes. And then also a cup of dried celery. You can use your own, own home dried celery or freeze dried celery. Whatever you like or whatever you have. I have Thrive freeze dried of course. I do not own a freeze dryer yet. Okay, now if you like, if you traditionally put mushrooms in yours, you could put dried mushrooms in here. Um, if you like sausage in yours, you can definitely throw in some freeze dried sausage. You know, whatever, however you like your stuffing. Make your own recipe. Instead of buying stovetop, and yes, stovetop does go on sale, but this, at least you know what's in here and there's no preservatives. This way, if you're making stuffing, for one person, maybe you just pull out a half cup or a cup of this mix and add a little seasoning and some hot water. It'll be completely up to you. Again, I know there are some households that have one person. This is a great thing to make for one person households. Then you're going to put your four jars lids on and get it sealed up. i got to go get mine. Okay, so I'm going to put on my four jars lid. And I'm going to go ahead and seal it up. And then I'm going to grab another jar and we're going to put in the seasoning. I will put a link for this vacuum sealer in the description box below for you as well if you are interested and haven't gotten yours yet. I know a lot of you have. This thing is amazing and so easy. I haven't even had to charge it yet. And look at our delicious homemade stuffing mix. Okay, let, let's now go make the seasoning for it. Okay, I'm just gonna use the same bowl and I've got a, a separate jar for the seasoning because that's a big jar of bread and there's multiple, I'll, it'll, I'll get multiple uses out of it. We'll start out with the base, which is going to be two tablespoons of powdered chicken bouillon. You're not going to need this big pint jar for this, so if you have a half pint jar, you can use that. I just don't have one in the house here. We have all these seasonings in the bread, but we want to reinforce it to make sure it's flavorful, so. Half a teaspoon of rubbed sage. Half a teaspoon of poultry seasoning. One teaspoon of pepper. This is a half teaspoon measure. I am going to do a tablespoon of onion powder. And 
and one teaspoon of garlic powder. Half a teaspoon of salt. Of course you can taste it and add more salt and pepper as you make it. This is just kind of the base. So this will flavor the hot water that you put into your stuffing cubes. So you'll boil your water and you'll mix this in first and then pour it over your stuffing cubes. Again, this will fit in one of those four ounce jars or you could use a half pint, whatever you have. This is all I had in here, so I'm going with this. Get my four jars lid. I'm actually not gonna rehydrate any and make any today. You, you've all made stove top, you already know how to do it. But you can even boil your water in your pan, put some seasoning in, and I'll put the amounts in the recipe for you. So to every cup of stuffing mix, you're gonna want at least a cup of water because you want it to be, you want it to hydrate and you've got freeze dried vegetables in there. <coughs> okay, label your jar and set your seasoning mix to your stuffing mix. Okay, the next one I have for you is a dip mix. It is to replace this green onion dip. It is our favorite in this house. These things have gone up to a buck 59 a pack and this isn't even my favorite brand. Kroger carried a much better green onion dip mix than this one. Um, but this is all that's left at my Kroger store. They don't carry the Kroger brand any longer. Sad. But instead of buying it with the preservatives, we're going to make it here at home. So I am going to put a half a cup of green onions, freeze dried green onions in there. I'm going to put rid of my packet there. A quarter cup in my mortar and pestle here. And I am going to grind this up. You can put this in your spice grinder. Uh, my spice grinder died and I haven't gotten another one yet so I could drag out my grain grinder. I suppose. I am putting a teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna put it right in here to grind it with those, make it a little bit easier. You can use sea salt, kosher salt, canning salt. I just wanna break these down a little bit more into a powder. This does take a minute. It's getting there. Sometimes the old fashioned way is just better. Yes, I still do use this quite often. This one here is a pharmaceutical grade. Obviously, you know I was in the medical field for many years, almost 30. But I also have a wooden one that I like to use. I use that one for garlic mostly. That's my garlic bowl. As you can see, it's turned into a fine powder. I'm gonna go ahead and add that right into my green onions. But I kinda want the contrast, I want both kinds in there. And then we put regular dried minced onion. I'm gonna put a tablespoon. This is onion dip. And then we have nutritional yeast. Tablespoon of that. And I am putting in a half teaspoon of black pepper because I like it. This packet does not have pepper in it. I read the ingredients. If 
you want to add cayenne in here, soup it up, you can totally do that. I'm going to start out with two tablespoons of my dip mix in a cup of sour cream. And let's see how that is. FYI, you can also use freeze dried sour cream into your mix and then just put water in it. You know, put the amount in your bowl you want and add water and rehydrate it all together. I don't even think I have any potato chips left. I think Robert ate them all. I'm gonna have to get some. Okay, let's give it a try. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in it. Needs a little bit more salt. This is delicious. Okay, I can't wait for Robert to get home from work to try this. She would live on it if I let her. Well, you know, she's an adult now. I guess she can if she wants. But when she was a kid, if I made green onion dip, this went on her baked potatoes, her tacos, everything. <laughs> so more than just chip dip, you can totally put it on your baked potato. You can totally put it on your taco. Optional, you could put a little bit of sugar in here, like a teaspoon of sugar. Um, sugar is in that other dip mix. I can actually tell the difference without the sugar, so. Um, so this is a sugar-free version, and I should probably have made more before I sealed that up. I'll open that soon, and I'll throw some more in. <laughs> I have written a whole bunch of fun dip recipes for you. Okay, I have another dip mix recipe for you. These dip mixes are nice to have ready and on hand if you have people over. You know, it's summertime still, and um, we have people over all the time, and especially swimming, so... It's nice to have, I can just whip these up when I know they're coming a couple hours in advance and then we have, I have chips and dip to serve them. Okay, next one I'm going to do is a buffalo chicken dip or hot wing dip, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to use a tablespoon of powdered chicken bouillon. This is my homemade ranch dressing seasoning. Now, um, I do make a dressing mix with buttermilk. This isn't it. You can use that one for this, but I actually don't have any, so I'm just using this one. But I'm going to use two tablespoons of this ranch mix. I have Thrive. This is the cheese powder, the cheddar cheese sauce powder. I am going to be using this. Four tablespoons. Frank's Red Hot. You, yes, this can come, this comes in a powder now. This is the hot part of the buffalo sauce. I love this stuff. I'm, I'm almost out. I gotta find it again. I used a heaping tablespoon. If you have blue cheese powder or freeze dried blue cheese you want to powder and put in here, you could totally do that. I don't like blue cheese myself. It's the only cheese I won't eat. Now I have Thrive Chicken. These are the grilled smaller chunks, but I'm going to throw, I don't know, a half a cup in here, and I'm going to break it up. And when we rehydrate this, it'll we'll rehydrate it with a little bit of milk, sour cream, and mayo to make sure these things rehydrate. I don't want chicken powder, but I want them smaller. So I'm just breaking them up a little bit. You could put them in a bag and do this with a rolling pin. But I do want a good half a cup, so I'll have to do one more. I think this would be kind of fun because when do you ever see a cold buffalo chicken dip? You don't. Everything, if you have, if you eat it, it's always hot. I, I make hot 
buffalo chicken dip every Super Bowl Sunday. Once in a while I'll make it another time, but that's usually it. And I also want to put in here a teaspoon of salt. Even though, yes, it has chicken bouillon, it's a different kind of salt, and it hits your tongue different. Okay, I'm just making a small amount, so I've got a quarter cup of mayo and a quarter cup of sour cream. And yes, you should use mayo and sour cream mixture both because it's buffalo chicken dip, and as you know, buffalo chicken dip has ranch dressing or blue cheese dressing in it, which includes mayo. I don't think it'll taste the same without it, so there you go. I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons in, and I'm also going to put a couple tablespoons or an eighth of a cup of milk in because I think it will need it to rehydrate. I'm gonna give this a couple hours and then we'll come back and taste it. This one really needs to rehydrate. It's good, but it needs more of this. We'll come back, check it. We'll let that rehydrate. In the meantime, I am gonna add one more tablespoon. After all, it's buffalo chicken dip, it needs the heat. Okay, another four jars lids, another four jars lid. I had written all these recipes for you, like last fall, for dips, and I hadn't gotten a chance to do them yet, so I'm super excited about this video to get to do these dips for you. Like I said, I wrote a bunch of recipes. Okay, on with the next dip. We are gonna do a vegetable dip. So for this one, we're gonna put in Spinach. I've got about oh quarter cup of spinach, quarter cup of kale. And by the way, I meant to put celery in my buffalo chicken dip and totally forgot. But you can totally put celery in that. Um, spinach, kale. I would normally put carrots in here, but I'm completely out. Um, one of my grandkids dropped the can of carrots on the floor and they spilled everywhere. And I thought I had more than the one, but apparently it's the only one I had. You can put any mixture of vegetables you like in your dip. I am going to add green onion. I am going to add a couple tablespoons of dried onion, regular onion. I'm going to put in a tablespoon of onion powder. I want two teaspoons of garlic powder. I'm going to put in one teaspoon of turmeric powder, half teaspoon black pepper. I'm going to put in a quarter cup of red bell pepper, but I'm gonna tear them up just a little bit. You can put in tomatoes, dried tomatoes. If you have dried artichokes, you can put those in. And then I am also going to add a tablespoon of nutritional yeast. And then this is very controversial, but I'm gonna put in accent. You don't have to, I like it. I'm going to put in a half a tablespoon, which is a teaspoon and a half. You can turn this into a cold dip or a hot dip. You could put this mixture into sour cream, mayo, and add some Parmesan cheese. 
and maybe some mozzarella and bake it. Mix it in with the sour cream and mayo and do the cold. Carrots and tomatoes in this also. And when I write you the recipe, I'm going to add those in. Okay, let's make a little bit up. Sour cream. If you want to use all sour cream and no mayo, that's completely up to you. I like the mixture. And we'll put in a couple tablespoons. Now, I'm just adding in a couple tablespoons, but after you taste it, that one wasn't quite a full. After you taste it, if you decide you want your taste, if you want it stronger, you can add more. This is all completely up to you. Now, it does take a few for all of these vegetables to rehydrate, so let's let them let it rehydrate and do its thing. Again, from here, you could put in Parmesan cheese and put it in a baker. Put some mozzarella over the top and bake it, and you can serve this one or the baked one with bread or tortilla chips, however you want to do it. Got my four jars lid. I have several recipes uh, to share with you, but I think I'll just put a couple in the comments that I don't make here because just to save a little bit of time. We're going to make chicken parmesan dip. Again with the chicken and I want to say I'm using Thrive because it is what I have. Don't be offended if you don't have it or if you don't like it or you don't use it. I'm just using this because this is what I have. If you have your own freeze dryer and you freeze dry all your own stuff or you, you dehydrate it, you're, you use your own stuff. I use a mixture of my own dried stuff and freeze dried from Thrive. I do love Thrive and I use it a lot. It makes, makes stuff like this a heck of a lot easier, I'll tell you that. Again, just breaking this up a little bit, smaller pieces. My buffalo chicken dip has thickened right up and rehydrated beautifully. I'll show it to you in just a few. This one, again, you can make hot or cold. My measuring spoon on the floor. I'm going to use two teaspoons of garlic powder in here. Two teaspoons of onion powder. I only really want a half a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm using, oops, about a half a tablespoon of butter powder so I can get a little bit of buttery flavor in there. Also, with the garlic and the butter, you could keep out the chicken and add sh the dried shrimp instead. Now I have tomato sauce mix. I love this stuff. It's so good. Since this is Parmesan, I'm going to add the tomato in here. But if you want to do a scampi instead of a Parmesan, you could omit this and just put extra butter powder in and do like a garlic scampi shrimp or chicken. I'm going to put a good three tablespoons of tomato powder in. I'm also going to put a tablespoon of dried onion in it. You could put mushrooms in here. You could put whatever you want. You could even do a, like a pizza dip and put sausage in here. Um, if you dried pepperoni or have freeze dried pepperoni, you could do that in there. You know, there's so many things you could do with dip mixes. Shelf stable Parmesan cheese. I'm going to use a good four tablespoons, and of course we need a little bit of salt. Again, I'm using a mixture of mayo and sour cream, just because I like that mixture. So half a cup, half a cup, quarter cup, quarter cup, I'm using quarter cup, quarter cup right now. And then I want to put in, I'll put in three tablespoons.
You could turn this into a hot dip and bake it. Also, if you, after making these, if you feel that you need them thicker, especially after you bake them, you could add cornstarch in. You could add xanthan gum. Xanthan gum will keep it thicker even when it's cold. Cornstarch won't. You actually have to heat it up. So we'll wait for that to settle down and get hydrated up and we'll put this away. Tons of fun dip ideas though. My, you could make up your own. You know, what, what things do you like? My, the point I'm trying to get across is we keep a lot of seasonings in our cupboards and a lot of dried and freeze dried foods so we could use them a lot more than we do probably. Okay, I got my four jars lid on. Here is my buffalo chicken dip. Look how thick it's gotten. Using these freeze dried vegetables, um, refreshing them in the mayo and sour cream really thickens it right up into a nice dip. Of course, any of these can be served with a dipper of your choice. Carb free if you're trying to be keto. This is going to be super delicious when it refreshes all the way. Mm-hmm. So buttery and yummy. Okay, I've got more recipes for you. I'll put them in the description box below. In the meantime, you've got an array to get you started. Okay, friends, that concludes our dry mixes for this video, but I will include extra dip mix recipes in the description box below for you. Super fun ideas, and I have a lot more. I'll have to make another dry mix video for you, but stored in, you can store them in any mason jar with your four jars lids. Okay, so we've got some wonderful dry mixes in jars. I will leave the recipes down below for you, and I will also link the video for making stuffing bread in the description box for you as well. You are gonna wanna join Kettle Kitchen live on August 4th for the giveaway. Make sure you watch all the videos in this collab and comment on them for your chance to win. To Tony's got some giveaways. Also, when you are on the live stream, if you comment with a hashtag, he'll be giving away door prizes for hashtag comments. What a super fun collab. I love that Jarred Up July is not just canning recipes, but anything you put in a jar. I think it's wonderful because I do a lot of dry mixes as well as canned items. Anyway, friends, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like videos like these, please consider subscribing. You can find me on Instagram at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook, and you can visit my blog at JennyGoff.com for all my recipes. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. And don't forget to go to all the other channels and watch the videos for Jarred Up July. I will put a playlist in the description box below for you. And I will put the times for the live stream on Kettle Kitchen channel in the description box below for you as well.